Hey, Sheridan College. This is Alex Goslin here for your yoga at 12 o'clock, 45 minute flow today. Um, I'm just gonna give another few minutes for folks to start to arrive at the session. Um, so make sure that you have a mat today. I set mine up. If you don't have one, um, make sure you get a blanket. Um, some extra cushioning for under the knees might be comfortable as well. If you have one of these, this could be good for today's practice. This is a block. Um, if you don't have a block, maybe a chair would be nice. So at some point during our practice today, I might pull out one of my dining room chairs. Um, and the last thing that you might need today is some sort of scarf or um, something that you can kind of hold a little bit taut. So like a scarf, maybe a towel. We're gonna be using it so that we can reach behind the back with the towel like so. If it's available to you to interlace your fingers behind the back, feel free to go for that instead. Um, but otherwise, get your towel, get your block or chair, um, maybe some water, and we'll get started in a couple, maybe just, we'll give it another minute or so for folks to arrive. So for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Alex, I use pronouns she and her. I'm a yoga teacher based out of Toronto, a social worker by day, teaching yoga at night. Very grateful that Sheridan's invited me to teach this 45 minute flow today. Um, for those who are joining, you will need a couple things for our practice. One, some sort of um, scarf or maybe a towel to hold on to so that we can clasp the hands behind the back. Um, I'll the other thing you're gonna need is maybe a block if you have one or a chair. We're gonna be doing some forward folding. So hinging from the hips, forward folds. Sometimes if the hamstrings are tight, it's nice to have some support for the hands, be that a block or a chair. Um, so make sure you um, retrieve those items. As well, if you have a mat, you can set that up. Maybe an extra blanket for cushioning under your knees would be fabulous. And lastly, I'm not gonna be playing music in this practice today because we do hope to upload this to YouTube. So if you have a playlist that you would like to listen to, feel free to set that up. Um, maybe something soothing, not too many lyrics, just so that you have some opportunity here to focus in, tune into the body, um, see how it's doing. So for today's flow, we're gonna start lying down. So as you're ready, you're welcome to make your way to your mat. I'm hoping for our flow today that we can focus a little bit on some strengthening of the lower body. So particularly the glutes, a little bit of the core. This is going to help us when we're um, doing a lot of sitting to help maintain that position for long periods of time, um, as well as opening up in the front body, the side body, um, try to let go of all that tension that we might be carrying. Um, this is a flow class that should be accessible to lots of different levels of practice. So whether you're new to yoga or whether um, you've been practicing for a long time, um, hopefully this class is accessible for you. I'll make sure to give a few different options for our flow, but unlike last week, I do hope to turn up the spice factor just a little bit, just so we get a little bit more of a sweat going today. So as you're ready, let's make our way down to the mat. We're going to start lying down. You can send the feet forward. If there's any tension in the low back, you might instead choose to bend your knees and then bring bent knees towards one another. The hands might come towards the sides, tuck your shoulder blades in. Or if you need some more grounding today, feel free to bring the hands to the abdomen. Soften your jaw, soften the muscles around the eyes or close them if that's available to you and comfortable. And just take a moment here just to notice what you notice. Notice how your body's feeling today. Noticing if your body's asking you to shift or change in this position to help you find some more comfort. And beginning to tune into your breathing, taking inhales through the nose if that's available to you. 
and exhaling again through the nose. And sometimes it's helpful to choose a point of focus for your breath, the nose, the ribs, or the belly. And if your mind begins to wander, gently escorting the attention back to this practice of noticing breath. With every in-breath, you might notice your belly begin to rise. And on your exhales, you might notice that gentle contraction of the abdomen as all the air flows out of the lungs. And from here, let's bring the left hand toward the heart, right hand on the abdomen. And just taking a moment to just thank yourself for making it to practice today. And then ask yourself what you need from the next 45 minutes that we'll share together. Let a word or a short sentence come to mind and let that be your intention for our time together. And then as you're ready, let's start our practice with three collective breaths. So start by exhaling, take a cleansing in-breath, and exhale to let it go. Two more like that, inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale, and let it go. From here, you're welcome to release the hands by the side body. And then from here, stretch the feet and hands away from one another. So let the hands flow behind you, reach fingers and toes away, take a nice big stretch. And on an exhale, let it go. From here, bending the knees, take your hands and just bring them to each shin. Just coming in for a little hug. You might rock side to side. It might feel good to let the knees come apart. Maybe you start exploring your hip joint, maybe making little circles with the knees. As best as you can, just moving intuitively, just notice the ground. The shins are now parallel with the ground. So just right here, you might notice the back trying to, last one each side. Exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Good, from here, bring the soles of the feet onto your mat. Take the hands on either side of the hips. Keep that connection with the core, so draw the ribs in, lengthen your tailbone, and then from here, press through the heels, find a bridge, inhale to lift the hips. Good, on your exhale, let the hips lower. Good. Inhale to lift the hips, squeeze the glutes, strong core, long line from the collarbones out through the knees. Good. Exhale to lower. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Good. This time we're going to add arms. So inhale, lift the hips, sweep the arms behind you. Exhale to lower hands and hips back down. Good. Two more like that. Inhale, press through the heels, squeeze the glutes. Exhale to lower. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Good. From here, let's move in for a little squeeze. Take the knees in towards the nose, nose towards the knees. Good, and then take the hands just underneath the knee creases, begin to rock along the spine, maybe four or five times, and we'll eventually make our way to a tabletop position. So in your tabletop position, you're gonna bring your wrists just underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hip bones. 
Now, as your hands are underneath your shoulders, I'd like you to notice the inner creases of the elbows. So I'd like you to try to turn the inner creases of the elbows forward. What this does is it helps to externally rotate the upper arm bones, helping to protect the shoulders. And then from here, draw your ribs in, lengthen the tailbone back in space. Good. On your next in-breath, draw the belly down, lift the chest, lift your tailbone. On your exhale, press the mat away, round the spine, feel shoulder blades separate and your tailbone tucks under. Good. Inhale to come forward. And on your exhale, press back. Good. One more. Inhale. And exhale to round the spine. Good. A little bit different this time. Inhale, let's come forward, squeeze your shoulder blades together, lift your tailbone. This time on your exhale, as you round your spine and tuck your tailbone under, draw the hips down and towards the right. So we're going to get a little bit of a stretch in the right side body. Good. Inhale to come forward, drop the chest down, squeeze shoulder blades together. And then exhale, round the spine, draw the hips down and towards the left. Nice stretch for the left side body. Good. Two more. Inhale. Exhale down and toward the right. Inhale. And exhale down and toward the left. From here, I'd invite you to just check in with your body. Just give yourself permission here to free flow. Just notice what feels good. Maybe you're making some circles with the chest over the wrist, warming up the wrists a little bit. Maybe you're wishing to hang out a little bit on either side, breathing a bit more space into the side body. And just use this opportunity, taking another, maybe four breaths or so. And a gentle reminder that throughout our practice today, do keep in mind that through this practice, you can win $50 with Sheridan College. So take a little photo of yourself at some point during our practice, share it, and make sure you tag the SSU for a chance to win $50. So as you're ready, let's start by tucking the toes under, hug the armpits in toward one another, let the hips come up and back. Let's find our first downward facing dog for today. Feel free to pedal your feet out, rock your hips from side to side. Now in your downward facing dog, if you're ever curious about where the hands and feet need to be, you can always come forward to a plank, just briefly. Your wrists are roughly underneath your shoulders, toe mounts are underneath the heels, hands are shoulder width apart, and feet are hip width apart. From here, you want to take a nice big bend in the knees and then send the hip bones up and back. It doesn't matter if your legs are straight in a downward facing dog, so try not to worry too much about that. And instead, look for a really long spine. So press through the finger pads, releasing some of that tension onto the wrists. Let the shoulders drop away from the ears. Bring your chest towards your thighs, gaze towards the thighs. Let's take one more big breath here. And exhale to let it go. Good. From here, on your next in-breath, let your right leg rise up. This is a three-legged dog. Square the hips, which means to hug that right hip bone down. And then on your next exhale, bring the right knee toward the nose as you come forward, shoulders over the wrists. Inhale, take it up and back. And then exhale as best as you can. Bring that right foot all the way forward between the hands. You might need to help it along the way. Drop the back knee down and then inhale. Find a low lunge. Sweep the fingertips up towards the sky. Tuck your tailbone under. Find a nice stretch for the left hip flexor. On your next exhale, fingertips sweep back, finding a runner's lunge. Good. Inhale, arms sweep up. And then exhale, frame the foot. Inhale, lift your heart. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Good. On your next 
in breath, left leg lifts. On your next exhale, bring left knee towards the nose, shoulders over the wrist. Inhale, up and back. And then as best as you can, exhale, left foot between the hands. Drop the back knee, inhale, sweep your arms up. And then exhale, runner's lunge. So sweep the fingertips back, hug your shoulder blades together, chest just hovers over the left thigh. Inhale, arms sweep up, tuck your tailbone under, and then exhale, plant the palms. Inhale to lift your heart. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Yeah, take a couple breaths here to reset. Good, and then we'll add a little bit more as you're ready. Inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, right knee towards your nose. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, right foot between the hands. Good, now options this time to maybe keep the left knee off the mat. Inhale, sweep your arms forward. Good, notice that there's a nice long line of energy from my fingertips out through the left heel. Hug your right hip bone back in space and maybe the gaze comes between the hands. Imagine you're holding a beach ball. One more big breath in. Exhale, sweep the fingertips back, squeeze shoulder blades together. A right, little bit different. Inhale, sweep the right arm up, left arm back. Good, we're in a warrior two. So in your warrior two, you want your right knee just on top of your right ankle. Make sure the knee isn't caving in or out. Your shoulders are over the hips, ribs are pulling in, shoulder blades squeeze together, and you're gazing between the middle finger of that right hand. Find your breath here. Press evenly through the feet. And then on an in breath, reach forward. And then on an exhale, flip your palm and reverse. Nice big stretch all the way from the hip out through the right fingers. Good, inhale, cartwheel the hands on either side of the right foot. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Good, moving into the opposite side, inhale, left leg lifts. And then exhale, left knee toward the nose. Inhale, let's send it up and back. Exhale, left foot between the hands. Options to drop the back knee. Inhale, sweep the fingertips forward. Good, so you're lifting the back kneecap if it's lifted. Heel over top of the toes. Gaze is between the fingertips. Long line of energy. Drop your shoulders away from the ears. One more big breath in. And then exhale, warrior two. This time, right arm is coming back. Left arm is forward. So that back foot is usually coming in maybe about a 45 degree angle. It's roughly a heel to arch alignment. Again, shoulders over the hips. Hug the ribs in. Slight tuck of your tailbone. So notice if your tailbone's tilting, Try to tuck it under, and again, try not to let the knee cave in or out. It's just over top of the left ankle. Find your breath. And then on your in-breath, reach forward. And on your exhale, keep the bend in the front knee and reverse. Good. Inhale to cartwheel the hands down, lifting the heart. And then exhale, plant the palms, downward facing dog. Good. Let's tie all of that work together. Start with a big breath in. Exhale to let it go. Good. Inhale, right leg rises. Exhale, right knee toward the nose. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, right foot between the hands. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fingertips back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, warrior two, right arm forward, left arm back. Exhale, flip your palm and reverse. Inhale, cartwheel the hands, lift the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, knee toward the nose. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, left foot between the hands. Pull that left hip bone back. Sweep the fingertips up, gaze between the hands. And then exhale, float the hands back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, warrior two, left arm forward, right arm back. Exhale to flip your palm and reverse. Inhale, cartwheel the hands. And exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. From here, let's drop the knees. Bring the big toes to touch. And then from here, press through the hands. Send the hips towards the heels. Let the forehead come down to your mat. Or if you have a block or a blanket, maybe you choose to bring the forehead down. And just take a few breaths rest of here, take a few breaths of rest here in your child's pose. Just notice the quality of your breathing in this shape without judgment, without a story. And a gentle reminder that throughout our practice, if at any point your body is asking you for a break, the shape is always available to you. Everything I say today is a suggestion something doesn't feel right for your body today, feel free to take any variation of the shapes that I'm suggesting that you might need. And as you're ready, let's release our child's pose. Take the hands forward, hug the armpits in toward one another, Tuck your toes under, send the hips up and back, find downward facing dog. From here, shift your gaze towards your hands and then begin to walk the feet towards the hands as best as you can. Good. On an in breath, let the hands slide up the shins, flat back, gaze downward, exhale to fold. Good. From here, just letting the weight come into the toe mounts, your chest or your belly is making contact with your thighs. You might reach for opposite elbows, or if you want a little bit more, maybe you bring the index and middle finger around the big toe, press the thumbs into your big toenail, let the elbows splay apart. Let's breathe here for another three. Let your head be long and loose for two. And one. Release the hands. And then slowly let's start to roll all the way up to standing, one vertebra at a time. And then as you near the top, let the shoulders come up towards the ears. And then exhale down and back. Now for this next um, little sequence, if you have a towel or a scarf or something to hold on to, you're welcome to reach for that now. Alternatively, for some folks, it might be available to you to simply interlace the hands behind the back. I have a shoulder injury, so I actually don't like doing that. So I'm gonna use this scarf, but take whatever variation that you need. Now before we get going, we're going to practice what's called Utkatasana or chair pose. Um, this is sort of like a yoga squat. For this shape, you want to bring your feet roughly underneath your hip bones. And then you're going to kind of screw your feet into the ground. So as soon as you do that, you should feel the outer glutes start to light up. And then I'd like you to draw your ribs in, strong core. And then you're just gently going to press the hips back, bringing weight into the heels. Press down through the big toe. Your knees aren't collapsing in or out. So they're just tracking about through that second or third toe. Good. Now from here, we're going to take the arms up. Good. Nice long line of energy through the spine. There's still a natural curve, but we're not tilting the tailbone and we're not tucking it so far under that the lower back is rounding. Somewhere in the middle. Good. Drop shoulders away from ears. 
Let's take one more breath like this. And then on your exhale, let the hands float back. Maybe you use your scarf and then open the collarbones. Good, so squeeze shoulder blades together. Notice that when you do that, sometimes there's a tendency for the chest to lift. Try to avoid that. Keep drawing the ribs in, keep your core engaged. You might start to feel your quads and glutes starting to let you know that they're here today. Take one more breath like this. And then on your exhale, let's fold forward. Let the hands come forward. Keep squeezing shoulder blades together. Elbows are straight, but they're not hyperextended. Good. Breathe here for another three, two, and one. Let's come back into our chair. Keep the hands interlaced. Inhale, lift the heart. Good. Exhale, fold forward. And two more like that. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Good. You can release your scarf or unwind the hands. Let them sort of flow down towards your mat. And then on an in-breath, find flat back. And then on an exhale, plant your palms. Step your left foot back and then your right. Find a plank position. Good. From your plank, draw the ribs in. Lift the kneecaps. Shift your weight forward. Shoulders are now over top of the wrists. Options to drop the knees. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Send the elbows straight back. Let's come all the way down to the mat. Good. From here, take your hands down by the side ribs. And then on your in-breath, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lift your heart. Good. From here, maybe the hands come wide. Squeeze the shoulder blades a little bit more. Breathe here. As if you could bring the elbows towards one another for another three. Another two. And one. Slowly let it all go. Let's press up and back. Find downward facing dog. Yeah, take a big breath in here. Exhale to let it go. Good. From here, shift your gaze towards your hands. Big bend in the knees. Start to walk the feet toward the hands. Inhale to find flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Your feet are roughly underneath your hip bones. Screw the feet into the ground. We're going to get fired up for our Utkatasana. Inhale, lift the chest, arms sweep forward. Long spine, core is engaged, ribs are pulled in. And then exhale, float the fingertips back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good. This time, inhale. We're going to start to come to standing, but we're going to pick up that right knee along the way. Sweep the arms up. Good. So just take a moment here to reset. Thighs parallel with the mat. Flex the left toes. Now I want you to keep your hips square the entire time. As though there are headlights on your hips, we want them both facing forward. From here, as you exhale, start to straighten that right leg, sending it straight back. Find your warrior three. Now this is a warrior three. If you'd like, maybe you reach for that chair for a little bit of added support. And what I'd really like you to notice is your left glute. This is how you know your hips are square. So you want your right hip bone to reach down until that left glute starts to fire. Hands might rest on a chair. Oops, sorry, that's a bit loud. Or it might rest on a block. Or you might send your fingertips forward. Breathe here for another three, two. Inhale, let's pick the knee back up. And then exhale, step that right foot forward. Good. Take your hands to your hips. We're going to take a pyramid pose. So for pyramid pose, your feet are a little bit apart. So it's roughly heel to heel alignment. 
that left toe is jutting out about 45 degrees. Right toes are forward, but your hips are square. So take the hands to the hips, draw the right hip bone back, left hip bone forward, ribs pull in, and then on your exhale, hinge from the hips, let's fold forward. Good, so this is gonna get into the hamstring on the right side. For me, I don't need to go too far to feel that work. You can stay here with the hands on the hips, squeeze the shoulder blades together, or again, you can use your chair if you'd like to, or even a block. Okay, let's breathe here for another three. Try to press firmly into the pinky side edge of that back foot for two. And one. Slowly, mindfully, inhale to come all the way back up. Good. Exhale, left foot joins the right, hands to heart center. Good. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Draw your belly in as you exhale to fold forward. Inhale, find flat back. And then on an exhale, step your right foot back and then your left, finding your plank position. Hips are about as high as the shoulders. Tailbone slightly tucked under. Inhale to come forward. Drop the knees. Exhale, bend the elbows straight back. Come all the way down to your mat. Inhale to lift the heart. Squeeze shoulder blades together. Good. Maybe the hands come wide. Squeezing elbows together. Breathe here for three. Four, two. And one. Take the hands down by the side ribs. Let's press up and back. Find downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale to let it go. Shift your gaze towards your hands. Start to walk the feet all the way forward. Inhale to find flat back. Exhale to fold forward. Root down through the feet. Sweep the arms up. Bend the knees. Utkatasana or chair pose. Good. Same thing as before. And then exhale, draw the fingertips back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good. This time as we come to standing, press through the right foot, pick up the left knee. Good. Imagine those square hips really root down through the right foot. And then as you exhale, draw the left foot back, straighten it out, keep the hips square. Feel free to reach for your chair if you need to. And then take any variation with your hands, it doesn't matter. Hands can be down, at the heart center, out, forward, it really doesn't matter. Whatever's most comfortable. Again, look for that engagement in the right glutes. Try not to bring the chest lower than the hips. Breathe here for another three. Another two. And one. Inhale, let's pick up the left knee. And then exhale, step that left foot forward. Good. Hands to hips. Let's reset for our pyramid pose. Right foot's at a 45 degree angle. Roughly heel to heel alignment. Draw the left hip back. Right hip forward, draw the ribs in. Good, and then hinging from the hips. Try not to hyperextend that front knee. Slowly start to bend forward. Use your chair if you need to. We're really looking for a stretch for the hamstrings, particularly the muscles on the outside of the hamstrings. Hips are square. And then really utilize your breath here. With every inhale, breathing space. With every exhale, maybe you move a little bit more into that space. Good. Take another three. Another two. And one. Good. From here on your in-breath, rise up. Good. Exhale, right foot joins the left, hands to heart center. Inhale, lift your heart. And then exhale, dive forward. Inhale for flat back. 
And then exhale, let's step back into our plank position. Good, last time that we'll do these little holds. So shift your weight forward, option to drop the knees. Feel your shoulder blades squeeze together as you come all the way down to your mat. Take your hands nice and wide, shoulders away from the ears, squeeze them together, lift your heart. Breathe here for another three, another two, and one. Let it all go, press up and back, find a downward facing dog. Now in your downward facing dog, feel free to pedal your feet out, rock your hips from side to side. Use your downward facing dog to reset, and in particular, use your downward facing dog to reconnect with your breath and to reconnect with the intention you set for your practice today. So we're gonna do one last round of effort, kind of building upon all the work that we've done so far in that last little sequence. So let's start with a united breath together, inhale, Exhale to let it go. Shift your gaze towards your hands. Walk the feet forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Root down through the feet. Bend the knees, arms forward. Utkatasana, inhale. Exhale, fingertips sweep back. Good. Inhale, pick up the right knee. Exhale, warrior three. Good, inhale, pick up the right knee. Exhale, step it forward. Square the hips. Exhale, fold. Good, inhale, rise up. Exhale, left foot joins the right. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step the feet. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Options to drop the knees. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale to lift your heart. Maybe find a baby cobra. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Last round. Inhale, walk the feet forward. Good, exhale here. Inhale, flat back. Exhale to fold. Root down through the feet, sweep the arms up. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, sweep the arms back. Inhale, pick up the left knee. Good. Exhale, warrior three. Good. Inhale, pick up the left knee once more. Good. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, square the hips. Exhale, fold. Good. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, right foot joins the left, hands at heart center. Good. Last flow for the day. Inhale. And exhale to dive. Inhale for flat back. Exhale to plant the palms, step or hop the feet back. Inhale to shift forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, lift your heart, and exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome. From here, let's let the right leg rise. Bring the right foot between the hands. Turn both sets of toes towards the left side of your mat, and then walk the hands all the way down. Good, so we're in a wide-legged forward fold. From here, this is a really nice shape to also use a block if you have one, and feel free to use your chair. On your next exhale, we're just gonna fold. Just breathing space into the hamstrings. And then as you're ready, make sure your toes are facing forward. We're just gonna take a little bend in that right knee, not too far. And then what I'd like you to feel is a stretch for the inner thigh on that left side. 
Now for a lot of folks, this might be enough for today. You can just stay here. If you'd like to add a little twist, you might draw your left hand just underneath your heart and then inhale, spin the right arm up. And take a couple breaths here. And then exhale to come back through center. A little bend in the left knee this time. Usually there's a little difference between right and left side without judgment, just noticing that. And if you'd like, press down through right hand, just underneath the shoulder. Let the left arm rise. A couple breaths here. And then slowly let it go. Awesome. Let's walk the hands all the way towards the top of the mat. And we're going to let go of the hips a little bit. So bring that right knee just behind the right wrist, right toes towards the left side of your mat, and then drop the back knee. Now we're coming into a pigeon. I'm going to give two variations for this shape, as some folks may have some knee pains. We want to be mindful of that. Now with this shape, Again, we want to square the hips forward, and you want to feel a stretch in the outside of the right glutes and hips. Once you find your sweet spot, you might stay upright, or some folks might find it better to come down onto the forearms. Now, if you have any knee injuries or any knee pain, you can take the shape onto the back. It's the exact same thing. It's called figure four. So that variation involves kicking the right heel up, crossing the right heel over top of the left thigh. Wherever you are, flex your toes. You might stay here, or you might float the left foot up. Now, whatever version you took, version one or two, as best as you can, try to let go of any expectations you have for yourself in this shape. Try not to force the body in any position that it doesn't want to be in. And instead, try to use your breath to help tolerate any discomfort. Really breathing space into the right hips and glutes. And oftentimes when the body is holding tension in one area of the body, we have a tendency to kind of hold tension in other areas of the body too. So notice if that's the case for you and try to let go of anything that doesn't need to work right now. <clears throat> when you're ready, slowly release that shape. And you're welcome to move on to the opposite side. Bringing this time the left knee behind the left elbow, left toes towards the right side of your mat. <coughs> and again, if you prefer to take the option of figure four, you're always welcome to do that. So just choosing any shape for me. This side of my body feels a lot better in a pigeon than it does on the opposite side. So again, just try not to judge that. Try not to push the body in any position it's not ready for. And if you chose pigeon for this variation, notice if you're leaning towards one side or another. Try to keep the body weight evenly distributed. Again, slow, smooth breaths. And just notice if your mind is wandering. 
just gently bring that attention back to this practice of noticing breath, breathing space into the left glutes and hips. Once you're ready, you're welcome to slowly let go of this shape. And we're going to make our way back to the mat, coming onto the back, however you'd like to get there. We'll close our practice with a twist. Take the arms into a cactus or a T-shape, bend the knees, and let the knees come over toward the right side. You might draw that left shoulder down, but you don't have to. The, the purpose of drawing the left shoulder down is really just to help make the shape a little bit more active. There's nothing wrong with choosing a passive version, it's just an option. Just breathing space into the left side body, the upper region of the spine. Or not the upper region, but more of the mid region of your spine or your thoracic spine. And then as you're ready, we'll draw the knees back through center and then over toward the opposite side. And again, just noticing what you notice. Maybe you draw right shoulder down. Taking a few breaths here. And then finally, let's draw the knees back through center. And we'll move in for one final hug. Wrap the arms around the shins. Bring nose towards the knees. Let's curl up in a little tiny ball. Take a big breath in. And then on your exhale, let it all go. And it feels good. Stretch the legs out. Tuck the shoulder blades under. Maybe you take the hands to the abdomen. Choose any shape that you'd like to rest in. Relax your jaw, the muscles around your eyes. Let go of what you need to do after this. Let go of this practice and just let yourself be here as best as you can. Letting your nervous system absorb the benefits of this practice. Now I'd invite you to remain in the position that you're in as long as you feel that you need today. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for sharing their energy today. I'd like to thank the community for coming out and thank Sheridan College for allowing me to help guide this practice. Again, my name is Alex. I'll be back next week for one more 45 minute flow. And again, at some point, um, do take a photo of yourself doing this practice. Tag the SSU for a chance to win a $50 gift certificate. Um, and do leave me any comments or feedback below. I look forward to flowing with you again next week. Namaste.